Welcome to the 611 Films YouTube page. We're back in 99. My name is David Groves, and with me, as always, my co-host. Neil McKay. American Neil McKay got the bandana ready to go. I got the American movies going on. And this is this is American movie. It is Um, literally called American movie. Yeah. And I and I actually forgot this is good timing too, because there's uh there's some scenes that take place at Thanksgiving in this movie, and we are filming this like what two weeks before Thanksgiving. So, yeah, like right around it'll it'll be coming out probably. We're gonna take the week off, just yeah, just as housekeeping. We're so this will come the, out either yeah the Friday the week of or week after Thanksgiving, but right we're, exactly. Yeah. Which you had not seen back in the day, and then just saw right. Yeah, never saw it. You mentioned that this was a 99 movie. It was uh, since we were doing American Pie, then American Beauty, and now mm-hmm. American Movie. With the American theme. Yeah, going the American on. theme. I was like, yeah, I've always seen that poster. Uh, and I guess it just never, it never hit me. Like, I didn't see it in 99, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it, it did well at the Sundance Film Festival, but it was one <clears> of those <throat> movies or at least the documentary just passed me by. I never, never saw it. Yeah, I, I didn't see it uh, in 99. I, it, I think it took a couple years. I, I'm almost positive I was, uh, well, where we used to work, the Star Lab, which was like the multimedia lab where they where uh, students would rent the camera equipment and learn how to do right. Photoshop and things like that. We worked there. I don't know if we were working there at the same time, but that's, I think, when I got wind of it because it was the whole like hullabaloo of like, independent filmmaking and stuff. And I mean, that's when mm-hmm. I was like, uh, I mean, in the nineties were big for those like indie movies, like uh, living in oblivion, right. the Steve Buscemi movie. So it was like, that's when I kind of got wind of those movies and saw that. And I saw this and um, because people were saying, Oh yeah, well, if you want to be a filmmaker, like watch this. And sure. well, I, before I go into my opinion, you, you I guess, let me know what you, yeah, what I you had just watched. I actually just, I did a rental on iTunes, I think uh, back in August since I'd never seen it. And, and I watched, I actually watched it on a plane uh, and it kind of got me, it got me very like nostalgic. It got me kind of teary eyed. Mm-hmm. It got me kind of cringe. I was cringing a lot. I was very cringy, not because <laughs> just yeah. because of the like Mark, Burchart, the lead character, the lead filmmaker, the whole story is about this guy that, you know, is a film lover, filmmaker, and he's been making stuff for years and years in his backyard <clears throat> of uh, uh, Wisconsin, I think Milwaukee. Mm. Um, and, Somewhere and, like in the yeah, middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. Middle of yeah, nowhere. I and uh, I, I guess I was, I was thinking that it was going to be like a road movie or it was going to have... I get the thing that I thought was this was going to be kind of a fun loving thing. And a lot of reviews that I've seen now were like, this is really funny. This is this. And I mm-hmm. look at it as almost like kind of, again, I say cringe, but it's only cringe because as filmmakers, I'm like, yeah, we did that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure yeah. And it's a guy that talks a big game. Like he's got the stature. He's a tall guy and he knows Mm -hmm. what he's talking about as far as, you know, angles, F stop, this, all the film tech, like terminology, like he gets, Mm -hmm. but he's always just so far behind as far as what it takes to actually, you know, make a movie Mm -hmm. or, you know, whether it's lack of preparation and that kind of thing. Yeah, lack of preparation. Mm -hmm. The whole movie, a lot of it is him getting drunk, talking about how good he's going to be and how great Mm -hmm. it's going to be. And I'm not going to be the the guy that works the nine to five, the man and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I think a lot of people say that, you know, and at the time I didn't, I, I guess where they were, where they lived and all that, I, I I go, wow, that's cool. Like, it is cool to see something like that. But the struggles that he had, I don't know if it, if you think it's a mental thing that he had or um, I don't know <sighs> what, like his personality was so interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's why the movie kind of became a cult phenomenon and um I, yeah, I, I, I mean, to, to your thing about the uh, it's funny and it's this, I mean, I, I, I don't know, like if I would say that. It was very right. interesting to watch. And there were parts of it that were very like, ooh, it's like a train wreck and you can't look away. I don't mm-hmm. think 
either of the, and it's kind of mainly centered around Mark and Mike who are friends. Um, and, and then Mark trying to do, uh, you know, this movie, but, um, and then the kind of the family and stuff. And I don't think anybody's like, you know, there's no bad intentions and stuff, but, but yeah. they're all kind of like struggling and they're all kind of like losers in a way. And it's like, they can't mm -hmm. like, they're battling their own demons and they're kind of living with these things and these obstacles that they've kind of created for themselves. And it, I just found it sad, really. Like, it's like, it, you kind of go, sure. oh man, like this is the American dream. And it's like, ee, it's not, not everyone's going to make it, you know? And this, these guys are not, mm -hmm. probably not up to snuff. Um, you know, right. when you're kind of like rooting for them, but it's like, oh, you keep, you keep messing yeah. up. You keep, you keep right. doing stupid stuff. And yeah, so I mean, I, I don't know if I, 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 I found it kind of weird. Like, it's funny. Like, what are you laughing at these people? I don't know. It just, it just didn't seem like it well, seemed I endearing think, and yeah. like fun to watch and interesting. And like, you kind of root for them, but I, I didn't necessarily like, oh, they're funny. Like, you know? Yeah. It, that's the thing that when I saw it too, and, and looking back at some of the reviews and I don't know, those, those reviews were happening around the time the actual documentary itself of the American movie got praise and went to Sundance, won the mm. grand jury prize. I think it even got like a million dollars from Sony as distro. Yeah. But to go back to the actual subjects, it's, it's, it is, it's kind of that, I wouldn't say it's heartbreaking, but it is interesting to see the lengths, you know, you and I, the lengths we mm -hmm. will go to make our movie of asking people for money. And that's, you know, for him, yeah. it was, you know, seeing the Uncle Bill and him being like, I know this isn't going to do anything. Yeah. Even in his mental state, and he was the older uncle of Mark, uh, who actually passed away like right after the film premiered. So mm -hmm. it was it was yeah. kind of nice to see that. That was that was really nice to see. But mm -hmm. that the like, you know, we I think everybody would say you need to have a little bit of delusion to want to be in the entertainment business, whether it's be a rapper, actor, oh, filmmaker, oh, for sure. To For get sure. into this business and think you're you're going to be the one in the million that's going to make it, mm -hmm. you have to have that. But to have it so ingrained in you, yeah, I think and that's, that's what I, the that, tricky thing. That's what the appeal of was this to me was that I was like, okay, this is a story about the ones that don't make it. You know, you have the, these Hollywood productions of like, oh, the underdog, you know, finally made. This is the underdog that doesn't do anything, and they're. And I think they've remained, you know, well, the, well, Mike, the, the, the best friend like recently died, but, um, like neither one yeah. of them really did anything, you know? Um, right. I mean, I think they had like five minutes of fame when they were like on Letterman or something like that after this movie came out. But, uh, right. you know, it's like, it's like Mark never made the American movie, you know, his, his, he never achieved his dream. I don't think Northwestern, Nobody... which was in the movie, like that which was, was the, yeah. The idea of the movie he's going to make after the movie he had abandoned for five, six years. Yeah. Just keep going that, with that one. That's the one. That's the one. That was the big Northwestern was the big one that was going to push him to the end. And so your thing about, you know, you, you got to have this headstrong, just crazy attitude. I mean, everyone's telling him. I mean, he, he's calling Coven, Coven. That's the name right. of the movie. But which, which is Coven? And he kept saying, no, it's Coven. And right. they're like, no, <laughs> it's not how you say it at all. And well, I don't like, want it to, to, yeah, I don't want it to rhyme with oven. That sounds weird. And it's yeah, like, it's just, you know, to be in okay. that headspace or to be like mm -hmm. that headstrong with it. Sure. It doesn't really make a lot of sense, but uh, okay. Right. I think and there you, was that idea with <clears throat> Ebert saying like, you know, the tenacity, like a lot of people, even in the, in the dock, like his tenacity, his wanting to do it. At some point, too, I I started to cringe a little and be like, yeah, dude, sometimes you just got to, like, move on or get it done and move on. Mm -hmm. And there's that thing. There was also the idea, too, uh, which mm -hmm. we've talked about uh, a few different times of the the fear of finishing, which I think he has. Like, all of this, mm -hmm. it's, what do I do after this or what? You know, I love yeah. the process in my head. I love the expectations. I love the, you know, him doing the math of if I only, because I, I do that all the time too. I <clears throat> I was doing it two, three years ago with, with psychos. If I only get this amount of people to watch it for this amount of money and then this, ha yeah, like, okay, that does make sense. But then you got to 
make it happen. Yeah. You know, you got to finish. The yeah, movie. it was that was that was a hilarious scene too. Like uh, where he's got this like whiteboard and he's like doing this math and he's like fuck all this. And then he's just <laughs> like, what are you, what is it? Now he's got new numbers up there and it's just funny. But that's like that's how you are as a filmmaker. Like this is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna sell three thousand units and they're gonna make forty five thousand dollars. Right. And I think maybe that's why people kind of say it's like this heartwarming kind of story because at the, I mean, it really is a kind of more about this friendship between the two, sure. uh, which was kind of like a weird thing. Like I think they met because they became drinking buddies and, or something. Mm -hmm. And they were like really like the one Mike was like really big into drugs and so much so that he's like this burnout. Um, right. yeah. I mean, he's kind of like, you, you, you kind of wonder like at first is he stupid, but I think he's just one of those like, Oh yeah. Uh huh. Like he's just been hit so much with the drugs but then there is that scene I, I, I just, where he's I just, talking to him in the editing bay. He's like, well, then I woke up at the hospital because I had taken this yeah. and this and mm -hmm. this. And I wanted to do more hits of acid, but my mom found them. And she yeah, threw right. them away. It's I like, what? Know. Like, it was these, these crazy stories. But I mean, I, 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 I knew, you know, people like that in, in high school and college. They just did so many drugs. They just kind of were like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. And you were like, they're not all there, but it's not like they're stupid. They just, I think that just drugs whacked them out a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he was playing the guitar but, most of the time, which pretty. Yeah. I mean, I, I've i never played the guitar. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 he did some. Like that. He did some. I mean, they did like ADR where he was like doing screams for sound effects. And I was like, whoa. Like, I mean, he, oh, he yeah, had yeah. like he had some stuff like, I mean, there's definitely like some talent going on. But um. It, it was just kind of like you see like, oh, man, it's so sad what happened to these two guys. And they, you know, they're just in a small town. And maybe that's all there is to do is dr uh, drugs and drinking and stuff. But there was this friendship there. Yeah. And just like at, at the end of it, like they were always like they made each other's day better just by being, right. you know, and it was like yeah, that, that was, was nice to see. That was the heartwarming thing. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of Back in 99 from 611 Films YouTube channel. I'm David Groves. Neil McKay. We'll see you on the next one. Later. Bye.